Hey guys, welcome back. This is part 8 of chapter 8 uh, forecasting. So here we we're going to look at these two forecast methods. So one is a time series method and one is a causal method. Okay, we're going to go and see a math of one simple way of doing each one of them. Okay, Causal method using linear regression. Okay. So linear regression methods are called causal methods uh, are the ones that you have a variable that's going to impact in your forecast. So we're not uh, are, we're not going to use the demand uh, to see how that impact on a future demand. We're going to take another variable and see how that variable impact in your uh, demand. So it used linear regression. So I uh, assume you guys have uh, used linear, linear regression before. You should have learned that in uh, 291, uh, the stats course or the other stats course that uh, you guys had. So hopefully you learned that and you remember. If not, let's uh, let's remind you a little bit, right? But basically, linear regression model is to calculate exactly that. So I have two variables, x variable and a y variable, and I create a, a model, a method, uh, a, a formula to understand how can I change one variable and what is the impact on the other variable, right? So example number of education is positively correlated with income so that's a pretty pretty standard uh, relationship between those two variables right so that's basically why you are here in college you are in college uh, you want to have more education and uh, so you can have a, a higher income right so uh, very few people come to college just for fun uh, most of you guys probably come to increase your income when you're going out uh, so you want to have more years of education so that you will increase your income, right? Uh, you can have, there's other models and correlations being tested right now. Uh, for example, you have this uh, social distancing uh, going on, and that's also, we could put that into a model, right? Uh, you have, you, we assume that by doing social distancing, you're going to negative impact in the spread of the virus right you're going to reduce the spread of the virus right and there are other methods that that were that are being tested and used as well okay so linear regression again we have an equation we have an independent variable which is x and we want to show how it impacts on a dependable variable which is y right so you can see you have two axes here have a dependent variable independent variable here right so is there a correlation between looking at this uh, scatter plot? Is there a correlation between the independent variable and the dependent variable? Can you guys see that? Yes? No? If you think that there is a relationship between them, is it a positive relationship or is it a negative relationship? Is it a strong relationship or is it a weak relationship? Right? So we can see that there is relationship between x and y because when I'm increasing x what's happening with y? y is increasing as well right? so it's in a linear form way that I can actually put a line here and it will be in kind of in the middle of all those data points right? so I increase x it will increase y that's what you call a positive relationship and also it's a strong one because all of those lines are kind of very close to a line that I can write here in the middle, right? So this is the line you can say that there's a positive and a strong correlation. Uh, the equation that I'm going to write for that to explain the relationship is going to be y equals alpha plus beta x. So whenever I'm increasing x, I'm increasing y by one unit of beta, right? For every unit of x that I'm increasing. That's why this is called a slope. You know, so you see what is the angle of that line is going to be beta. It's going to be the slope. And alpha will be the constant. That's will be the height of the line. So it actually is going to be the point where beta is equal zero. So if I continue the line here, uh, here will be the value where if x is zero, uh, that's alpha. Okay, 
So that's the equation to explain. We have, we can change the slope, the angle of this line, we can change the height of this line, right? And we also have something called error. Error is the difference between our data points and actually the predicted value, right? So if I use this, uh, this equation to predict y, the prediction will be here, okay? So this is the value that I would predict for this x, but actually it was here. So why does that happen? Because when we look at a correlation between two things, there are other aspects that uh, we're not going to look at. So if we go back to the virus example, we can say, okay, if there's more elderly people in the region, we'll expect the death rates will be higher, right? But there are other things that also impact, like what is the health system, how many hospitals you have, how many uh, inhalers you have, and uh, how does the government act on that uh, particular region. So you have other things that impact you're not putting into the model. That's why usually you generate an error all the time because you can't put all the millions of different variables that impact in a, any given situation. Okay. So moving on here to the R. So we're going to look at two different things, uh, R and R square. R is just the, in, in a simple regression where you only have one X and one Y. R is going to be the correlation. So you either negative correlated or positive correlated or no correlation at all. So if it's zero, it's no correlation. If you go with negative numbers and if you get a one, it's a perfect correlation. If you get minus one, is a totally negative uh, correlation. If you go to positive one, it's going to be a perfectly positive correlation. And another coefficient that we want to know about is what we call R square. So R squared it goes from 0 to 1 and is basically explaining the amount of variation that you can explain by that regression model. So it's a percentage. It explained the variation of Y based on X. And we wanted that to be as high as possible, right? Because we want our model to be perfect. So higher it is from 1, 1 will be 100%. X explain 100% of Y. And usually that never happens. So you have some kind of explanation, but you can't get to everything, every variation of Y.